Good morning from Knick Glacier right behind me. Beautiful day, absolutely gorgeous. And I want to talk about the different gear that we're using to make the trip work, uh, like power, uh, internet, refrigerator, all that stuff. None of this stuff is was sent for this trip. None of these companies are paying for me to talk about them. Uh, these are just products that I had that I took out on this trip to make the trip function. And I'll talk about some of the pros and cons, things like that, and uh, hopefully educate you a little bit on the different types of gear and what to expect from it. Let's start with power. So for this particular trip, the main battery here is an Anchor Solex C100. Uh, normally, I would have a Blue Eddy Elite V2 in here, but it actually had to get sent back to the shop because one of the fans went bad and it didn't get back in time for the trip. So I use this for, right now I'm charging some drone batteries with it. This is um, a cord to go upstairs for my CPAP machine. And this is power for the canopy. It runs all the outlets and all the lights and stuff in here. And then the cigarette lighter port is running to the refrigerator. Now this is a thousand watt hour battery. You can see I'm at 51% right now from overnight. Uh, not enough power. I, I wish I had my 2000 watt hour system or even more because I, I'm not comfortable getting down into the 50% range. And on some nights, especially when it's been warmer and the refrigerator is running more, I've had this all the way down to 20%, 15%, and one night I actually ran out of power. So uh, always want more power. I can never have enough power. And um, unfortunately, uh, you know, this thing works great, but it's not as big as I would have liked to have taken. Now inside the vehicle, I have a Blue Eddy AC70. This is a 768 watt hour battery that um, mostly powers Starlink. That's its, its main function uh, to run the Starlink system um, during the evening and the morning hours when we're not running anything. Right now I'm uh, pulling in 35 watts of power from the solar and the Starlink is taking 17. So I have a net gain of power coming into the system right now. Also, I'll use this for um, the USB ports for charging drone batteries or charging camera batteries while we're driving because it's getting a good amount of power going into it to keep things running. Now, to charge the Anchor Solex that's in the back, now, unfortunately, I don't have any way to show you without taking everything out of the back how things are getting charged. The Anchor Solex is being charged while we're driving by a Blue Eddy Charger 1 that's under the back seat. That's putting about 560 watts into this thing, and this being a 1,000 watt or 1,000 watt hour system means they can charge it from zero to 100% in about two hours, so not too shabby. On the Blue Eddy side, the internal one, I have, <laughs> I did a video on this and I'll, I'll put a link up above, but I have essentially down here connected to the Gladiator's AC port, a 200 watt LED light driver, <laughs> which takes the dirty, AC power from the Gladiator and converts it to DC power, which I have an XT60 for. So when I'm driving, I plug this in and that will charge this at 200 watts. Now I can upgrade that LED driver, which I'm going to when I get home to a 300 watt. Cannot go 400 because the outlet maxes at 400 and if there's the slightest hint of it going over, it shuts it off. So 300 is gonna be nice and safe, but even with 200 on a 768 watt hour battery here, uh, you can see I'm 22%. So I got 75% of 768, call it 700-ish. So I'll probably get this thing recharged in about three hours. So not bad, considering it's a four hour drive out of here, by the time we are off the trail, everything will be well over 100%. And then our internet, 
we have a Starlink Mini that normally sits inside on the American Adventure Labs uh, Molly shelf, but we needed some better access last night just to make sure that we could look at some maps. I hadn't been able to do a video FaceTime with Katerina for a while. I was able to do that last night with that and uh, have a good conversation with her. So that was good. So let's talk about the fridge. So our fridge for this trip is this absolutely ginormous Dometic CFX 75. And this was probably a big mistake because this thing is huge. It sucks a ton of power and it, it was just unnecessary. I didn't need to bring this much food, but Katerina was trying to keep me, you know, as stocked as possible. And this thing was completely full, but it is a power hungry beast. And only having a thousand watt hour power station with a refrigerator this big probably wasn't the best move. I should have taken something smaller and just relied on going to grocery stores because we're in plenty of big towns with grocery stores. Restocking it wouldn't have been a problem, but this thing, uh, I mean, yeah, it's great. I mean, I have a lot of food in here, but the flip side is it draws a ton of power. Now, let's talk about solar panels. I did not have a chance before I left to install a set of 400 watt solar panels on the top of the canopy. They're sitting in my garage. I wish I would have had time. That would have solved some of my power problems, especially up here in Alaska where it doesn't get dark till 10 o'clock at night, 10.30, and it's bright at five o'clock in the morning. That's a lot of time to be generating solar. So for now, I'm using this Renogy pack here. Um, it's great, it's a 200 watt uh, system, but you notice on the Blue Eddy AC70 that I was only getting about 30 watts of input. Well, if you look at the sun, well, you probably shouldn't look at the sun, it's bad for your eyes. Um, it's not super clear today. I mean, we have incredible visibility. I mean, that is 20 some, 30 some miles away. Absolutely insane visibility. But in the sky, there's kind of a haze and it's cutting down the amount of power that the solar panels can take in. So I'm not getting anywhere near 100% efficiency. It's still, I'm generating 30, 40 watts, which I'm only drawing 20 watts, so I'm staying ahead of the curve with it, but that's, <laughs> you know, it's just one of the things you need to understand about solar panels. If you buy a 200 watt solar panel, the vast majority of the time, you're getting nowhere close to that. You're getting 25%, 50% of its usability, which is why I always suggest overbuy on your solar panels. If you think you need 100, buy a 200. If you think you need a 200, get a 300 or a 400. Because they're not as efficient as you think, and you're going to need more. So. That's our power, that's our internet, that's our refrigerator and our solar panels. So hopefully this, you know, kind of gave you a little run through of how we're taking care of business here in Alaska on this trip. Uh, be sure and subscribe and check out the amazing videos, the awesome trip that we had all the different places like Kinnick Glacier right here hard to beat this view, isn't it? Yeah, pretty incredible. So like I said, none of this stuff was sponsored. None of this stuff was paid for. My trip isn't paid for. That all came out of my pocket. Um, but many thanks to the subscribers and to the Patreons who help support us and make things like this possible so that we can bring you these adventure videos that we enjoy making. So, well, for me, because I'm out here by myself at the moment while well, rich is over there on the phone be safe out there we'll see you on the trails